So moving on to ink, um, it's it can be a very trying medium to use because there's no going back with ink. Um, most of the time when I use it, I use a pencil to start off and before I even move on to ink. Um, here's a nice little example of a, an apple. And I like when the, um, the hatching sort of follows the, the form here. It's not the only way to hatch, but it's, it's my preferred way to hatch. And you, you have to build up um, line without really um, getting down a full value like you can with graphite or charcoal. The only way you can get an even um, gradient down is when you use an ink wash, which I'll eventually show you. So here's, showed you this before, I think, um, the Albrecht Dura Pillow studies. And again, the hatching has to be built up slowly. And the, the denser you build up the hatching, the darker it get, goes, the, the, the more airy and spread out the hatching, the lighter the value is. It's, it's tricky to get it, um, to get a full sense of full values with hatching only. It can be done. It's, it's tricky. It's time consuming. That's why I usually end up sticking in an ink wash to get a nice even value. Here's a Picasso. He's sort of doing something very different than um, Albrecht Dürer. He's not necessarily trying to follow the forms. He's kind of breaking up the space in a his typical way. So the 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 sense of form he gets is a little different. So thinking of even values, um, this is done with computer, this isn't done on, with ink, though it kind of does look like an ink wash. This is one of the first things I tell students to do when they're, um, after they, because most students, I always find a lot of students I have, they, they rely on um, line only. And I usually tell them, okay, once you have a line drawing, now imagine you stick a light source into the scene, what does that light source do? Well, first, where is the light coming from? The top, the side, the bottom? Um, where is it coming from? And then once it shines into the scene, how does it illuminate things? And how do shadows get cast? It's the first thing to, cons to consider once you have a nice little line drawing going, which a lot of times I feel like students don't ever move past the line drawing stage. Um, and I like this because it's not really using many many values it's just it's literally just black and white and one middle gray um which is very efficient it's efficiently used so this is what i mean by introducing an ink wash so this is line only and then line plus a fill in of ink and you can water down the ink to lighten it or use it pure straight out of the bottle to keep it dark. Um, and there's no necessary right or wrong um, stage to introduce the wash. Some people start with wash and then add in the line, or some people start it with the line and then add in the wash, or just kind of use a combination of the two. Lots of times I start with, um, with a simple pencil outline, and then I fill in ink, and then come in with some line, and then let it dry and come, maybe come back in with ink wash again. There's no like right um, formula for this. Here's another example. It's very much like watercolor where you, sl you sort of thin it out with water to lighten it up and you let the paper be your white. Um, another good example, um, we can see where the hair here, maybe this is like straight out of the bottle thinned out, thinned out even more, and a really, really pale wash. I love these pale washes in here. And combining it with hatching. Same thing. And it's hard to tell which was done first, the wash or the hatching. You can, you can do it either way. This is a Rembrandt. I love how just bold and simple and very um, clear about what's going on. You know that there's a shadow on the side of the path, there's light here, um, kind of atmospheric perspective of this getting paler as you go away. Um, this artist, and I don't know if this is a male or female, but um, they're, I, I pulled these off of their Instagram. 
I love how bold they are with their ink. Um, you can see, it doesn't even look like they use pencil. They'll, they'll use the brush, you can see, and the push down hard to get the fat line. And you can see here is a really good example, like really using the tip of the brush to get it thin and then pushing down and doing this, looks like, a, like in one stroke almost here. And coming back over here, um, maybe this is the bottom of the, the tube top they're wearing, and then pushing down on the brush to get the shadow on the front of the hand, and then lifting up to get thin line again, and then using this really bold quill ink line here. This artist is just bold with a brush. Here's another example too. Um, brush only doesn't even look like they're, they're using pencil. Um, creating shapes. I like so you, the thing is like you, they're pushing down with the brush creating this big shape But the shape is doing something specific. It's the edge of the shape is creating the shoulder So it's like they're creating you know an edge without even using line same thing here is the edge of the leg This shadow shape creates the edge of the, the leg here So it's using masses of shapes to create line which is a very painterly thing to do which ink washes to me ink washes a good um way to do like a study for a painting another example so you can see like this like this giant shape here the edge of it is creating the line for the edge of the figure there's no line nice just bold marks and they're mixing it in with some watercolor very boldly uh tiepolo old school painter uh, what is he is he French I don't even remember now um, I like how he does this he, he's known for doing this technique where he just uses like two values of ink a light and a dark value but it, it's still um, watered down like this shadow isn't pure ink it's still a light it's what I always recommend students do if they don't want to waste um, ink is get a uh, like two containers maybe three uh, you can use like you know like a baby jar something with a lid on it and mix up two values that you think you're gonna use the most of and then you always have them ready to go and I usually have like I do this and I have one labeled light and one labeled dark and then I have my paper that's my white and then I have straight out of the bottle that's my black so with just two two values of ink you can have basically four values Another Tiepolo. And again, it's a good painting um, technique because this is the first thing you do when, when you're painting is um, after you kind of have some basic line work, you try to block in the shadows and to figure out where your light source is coming from. It looks like it's coming from this side. And it's a really good just abbreviation of all the light mass and shadow mass. Another Tiepolo doing the same thing. Looks like just two values of ink. Uh, Richard Diebenkorn, um, I guess he's known as like a Bay Area painter. Uh, I always like how very um, watercolor-like his ink washes look. It doesn't look like he's using a lot of line work. Um, he's pro he probably penciled some of this in. I kind of see pencil and then bold just fill-in of um, silhouettes of masses of shadows. And he's mixing it here with some charcoal pencil. It's a good fast way to fill in values, ink wash. Like if you don't wanna, if you don't have a lot of time to slowly, slowly build up a fill in, you just get some ink wash and, and a big brush, not a little brush. It's good to have a, a big brush and a little brush so you can maybe do smaller things and then bigger things. Like you don't, you wouldn't wanna fill in a big area like this with a tiny little brush, you want a nice big one. Beautiful compositions. He's always really good at um, nice balanced compositions. And so, like this is a figure drawing. So in figure drawing classes, you have a very limited amount of time. Like um, when I teach it, the longest pose I'll do, and I won't do it till the end of the semester, like maybe an hour. And on average, maybe it goes up to like, early on would go up to maybe 30 minutes so you don't have a lot of time to um, you know use a graphite pencil and slowly slowly hatch and build up 
So you have to come up with really, really quick ways of filling things in. And, you know, an ink wash, you could, you know, after you've done the line work of this thing, you can come in with a, a big brush and like your ink, ink washes and like fill this in in seconds. Wouldn't even take you minutes to fill this in. Here's just a ink, uh, hatching only drawing. Um, this is uh, if you. This is H.R. Geiger. Um, he's the guy who designed the aliens from the Alien movies. Uh, he's using a ballpoint pen here, building up the hatching. Um, Robert Crumb. He's a uh, like an underground comic artist. I always recommend showing him to students who are upset who really want to learn how to do hatching he's kind of probably the best living um, artist who does hatching he kind of exclusively uses hatching um, I mean it looks like he's using like a marker or something to fill in the background but most of the time and he uses um for the most part like a rapidograph pen which is which is kind of like a refillable micron pen Oh yeah, and by the way, his sketchbooks are really good to look at. If you just Google Robert Crumb's sketchbooks, um, he just he's an obsessive drawer. He draws like every day, obsessively. And it's it's like his obsessive um, tendencies, you can see it like in just his subject matter. Um, a good example, I just want to show you that it's possible to do landscape. And it's I like this one. I, forget, I didn't write the artist. I don't know who this is, but I forget. But I like how um, you can do nice atmospheric perspective really well. Just thin it out with more water. It's a nice, nice effect. And I love how bold this is. All the buildings and trees look like they're just black. And then thin out for the sky and then add more water to get it lighter. And you can see, I want you to see it, just how they're using a pretty big brush too. Like, maybe they're using, like, a thin brush for this these lines here, but for, they're using a pretty broad, wide brush for most of that. Another bold landscape. Another Albrecht Dürer. So I think he's using some type of tempera paint. So he uses, he'll use the tempera paint on a with a nib and do the hatching, and then I think he switches over to a brush for the softer here. It's, it's, it's definitely a different... Um, application for over here because it's not built up with hatching you know for those of you who love the tone paper you can still continue that with ink and I like you can see nice hatching with just white and again if you let some of the paper show through you can get the middle values and he's using still a brush for the fill-in over here of like a, th a thinned out ink Uh, I should do Glenn Brown before, and it's like gray paper with just white and black, and it doesn't look like he uses in-betweens. It looks like there's some in-betweens over here. Like, it looks like maybe that's an ink wash. It's hard for me to tell, but very stark contrast, so, and he doesn't really build up, like, in-betweens with hatching. He kind of keeps it pretty, con um, the, the contrast pretty stark. Uh, Michael Bormans, he's a contemporary Belgian painter, I believe. I always want to say German, but I think he's Belgian. Um, I love his paintings; they're really nice, um, and a nice use of you know white ink. And the, again, you can only use white ink if the if the if the ground is really dark. You know, it is possible to 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 do a really really dark ink wash on on white paper, so you have the a contrast uh, a contrasted ground to add the white later another Michael Bormans I think he's using watercolor and ink together here could be colored ink uh, Raymond Pettibone he's um, his work is very like stream of consciousness just like if you try to read his stuff it just it doesn't make any sense or at least it doesn't make any like um, well, it kind of makes sense, but it's, it's a very, like, um, almost dreamlike kind of logic to it. Um, and ink, he, I think ink is really appropriate for what he does, because you can't go back, and it's, it's you, it has to just be um, just really natural, the way it just flows out. And it goes well with his, his technique, or his style of conceptual drawing. Another one of his, he's obsessed with Gumby. 
another Raymond Pettibone. More Raymond Pettibone. Neo Rausch, a uh, German painter. Um, he's using marker definitely in here. This looks like oil paint up here. Um, and I did, I, I have a book. Here's an, this is another Neo Rausch. I have a, a book of his drawings and he, he says he deliberately uses like the cheapest throwaway paper that he has. So he doesn't, so when he does these little doodles, he doesn't care about what he's doing. Which is a good, it's a, I mean, I do a version of that when I, I constantly practice draw on um, that throwaway uh, printer paper. It's a good way to free yourself up, even if, if not to have like precious, nice paper to always draw on, because you tend to freeze up. And his drawings are very stream of consciousness too, just like his paintings. And one final technical note I wanted to talk about, because I don't think I said this in the video, the demo, is that you insert the nib on the side like in here, you don't stick it in the middle. So it should line up with the edge of the nib holder like this. Students always jam it in the middle here. It's not meant to go in the middle. It's meant to go on the side. And this is what drawing nibs look like. My favorite are these two actually over here. Um, I think these are just a softer metal and this is a stiffer metal. Um, you don't want to get um, a chisel tip. So like, like most people, if you've ever seen those like, uh, those uh, pins that people sell, like, uh, what do you call it, like a fountain pen, it'll have a chisel tip, which is for signing your name. It's meant to be like a calligraphy nib. You don't want a chisel tip. You want something that goes to a sharp point like this.